Good day everyone. So my report is all about financial analysis. So financial analysis, it talks about the vertical analysis, horizontal analysis, and ratio analysis. So today, um, let's talk about the ratio analysis. So let's define first what is ratio analysis. So ratio analysis is a quantitative analysis technique applied by an entity to be able to assess the company's liquidity, solvency, profitability, and operational efficiency through scrutiny of account balances reported in the balance sheet and income statement. So, we are now going to scrutinize the financial statement on the account titles that we need to consider in order for us or for the company to assess their liquidity, solvency, profitability, and operational efficiency. So, later on, you will understand what this word means. Ratio analysis, we will be doing calculations of ratio in order for us to analyze what's really happened in the company through the use of their balance sheet and income statement. So basically, we will focus more in a statement of financial position, statement of comprehensive income, because um, in ratio analysis, we will never using a cash flow. So let's move on to um, liquidity ratios. So liquidity ratios determine whether an entity can be able to pay for current liabilities as they become due with the use of current assets. So, um, so what we are talking about in liquidity ratio is kaya bang magbayad ng company ang kanilang mga current liabilities gamit lamang ang kanilang current assets. So, um, in liquidity, tinitingnan natin is yung item related to the company's current assets or versus um, the current liability. So, um, let's find out. So, here are the formula on how to um, determine all of that. So, current ratio is equal to current assets over the current liabilities. Next, how to get the asset test ratio is equal to quick assets over the current liabilities. Next, cash ratio is equal to total cash over current liabilities. So, um, as we can see, it's a comparison. Your current item versus your current liabilities. So, um, can the company pay their current liabilities with the use of their current assets? So, um, let's begin with current ratio. Current ratio answers the question, can the company pay for their current liabilities with current assets. So, kaya ba ng company na magbayad ng kanilang current liabilities gamit ang kanilang current assets? So, the formula that we are using is current ratio is equal to current assets over current liabilities. So, here, the current assets is 3,704,701. And then, our current liabilities current liabilities is 2,283,000. So we will divide it so it will come up with 1.62. That is for 2020. So the next current ratio for 2019 is the current asset is 3,589,755. We will divide it by our current liabilities with 2,423,000. It will come up with 1.62. 48. So, for both years, the entity's current assets are larger than current liabilities. The entity can pay for their current liabilities using their current assets. So, since the ratio is greater than 1. Okay, so always remember that current ratio is greater than 1. The entity can pay current liabilities using current assets. Well, the current ratio is equal to 1, so current asset is equal to current liability. Uh, when current ratio is less than 1, the entity cannot pay current liabilities using current asset. So, um, because your numerator is less than the denominator. So, in here, this uh, in this example, um, both 2020 and 2019, 
um, carrot ratio is favorable because it is greater than one. As a test ratio answers the question, can the company pay for their carrot liabilities with quick assets? So when we will say quick assets, we can see in our carrot ratio that there are items that are not readily convertible into cash. So for example, um, the inventory. So kailangan mo pang dumaan sa selling transaction um, bago mo siya maging account receivable and then basically um, yung account receivable mo ay magiging cash pa. So um, yung other assets naman po natin, for example, is your prepared rent, prepared insurance, um, office supply, Usually, hindi mo naman talaga maasahan na makonvert ma -convert natin as cash yun, di ba? So, ang gagawin natin ay ina-narrow down po natin yung analysis natin. So, with the use of this formula, asset test ratio is equal to quick assets over the current liabilities. So, here in our Tropical Company, the comparative statement, um, asset test ratio is equal to quick assets. So, yung quick assets natin is ito. 1,896,337. And then, we will divide it to our current liabilities, which is 2,283,000. So, it will come up with 0 0.83. So, that is for 2020. While in 2019, the quick asset is 1,456,997 and then divide, divide it to, to, to our um, current liabilities which is 2,423,000 and it will come up with 0 0.60. So, um, for both years, the entity's quick assets are lesser than current liabilities. So, the entity cannot pay for their current liabilities using their quick asset. So, since the ratio is lesser than 1. So, we always remember that the asset this ratio is greater than 1. The entity can pay current liabilities using the quick asset. But, when the asset this ratio is equal to 1, so quick asset is equal to current liabilities. When the asset test ratio is lesser than 1, so the entity cannot pay for their current liabilities using current assets. So, itong ating um, example is cannot pay for their current liabilities using their quick assets. Cash ratio answers the question, can the company's cash pay for their current liabilities? So, our formula is cash ratio is equal to total cash over the current liabilities. So here in 2020, total cash is here, the cash only is 1,896,337 and then divide our current liabilities with 2,283,000 and it will come up with 0 0.83. So, cash ratio in 2019, um, 1,456,997 We will divide it to our current liabilities with 2,423,000 It will come up with 0 0.60 So, um, for both years, the entities um, current, liabi current liabilities um, are larger than cash So, the entity <coughs> cannot pay um, for their current liabilities using their total cash So, since the ratio um, the ratio is less than 1 which is 0.83 and 0.60 so we always um, always remember that cash ratio is greater than 1 the entity can pay um, current liabilities using total cash if cash ratio is equal to 1 so the cash is equal to current liabilities while cash ratio is less than 1 the entity cannot pay current liabilities using total cash so save as our example today. Solvency ratios. It determines whether an entity has more ownership rather than debt. It is also called leverage ratios. So these ratios involve comparisons of debt, asset, equity, and interest. So um, in solvency ratios, we will see how much or how big um, the company debt. But, uh, but actually, um, solvency ratios um, determine how solvent the company is. 
So, baka masyadong malaki na yung um, otang ng company. So, hindi na siya sobra. So, we have the formula. The ratio is equal to total liabilities over the total assets. So, next is debt to equity ratio is equal to total liabilities over shareholders' equity. And then, time interest earned ratio is equal to earnings before interest and taxes over interest expenses. So, um, we will explain it one by one. Ratio answers the question, how much of the assets are financed by debt? So, um, remember the account equation that is asset is equal to liabilities plus capital. So, interpreting it into analysis perspective, assets can be financed by debt, which is your liabilities and your capital or your equity. So, by using this formula, that ratio is equal to total, li total liabilities over total assets. So, in 2020, our the ratio is total liabilities. So, total current li liabilities and add it or non current liabilities. So, 2,283,000 plus 4,363,000. 694 will come up with 6,646,694 and then divide by the total asset which is 12,356,216 and it will come up with 53.79%. Um, in that ratio in 2019, we will add the non current liabilities and non current liabilities. So 2,423,000 plus 5,751,997 it will come up with 8,174,997 and then divide it to our um, total asset with 12,571,442 and it will come up with 65.03 first time. So for 2020, 53.79% ng ating assets ay galing sa utang. And then for 2019, 65.03% po ng ating assets were financed by debt. So for both years, debt is greater than equity since um, debt ratio are both higher than 50%. So basically, parang ating equity ratio um, mas mababa naman sa 50% kasi mas malaki si debt. Higher than 50%. So, remember that Debt ratio is less than 50%, assets are financed more by equity. So, when debt ratio is greater than 50%, assets are financed more by debt. And then, both debt and equity is 50%, assets are financed equally by debt and equity. So, next, we'll move on to debt equity ratio. It answers the question which has more weight, debt or so, um, in this, we will just comparing um, our total, li total liabilities to total equity. So, um, we, will have, we will use this formula, debt to equity ratio is equal to total liabilities over the shareholder's equity. And the debt to equity ratio, 2020 is, so here in total liabilities, we will add also the current liabilities and then current will come up to 6,646,694 then divide by our shareholders equity with 5,709,522 so it will come up with 1.16 that is for 2020 in 2019, the current liabilities and then current liabilities will add and it will come up with 8,174,997 and then we will divide it to our shareholders equity and 2019 is 4,396,445 and it will come up with 1.86 So, for both years, um, has more weight than equity since both ratios are greater than one so always remember that when debt to equity ratio uh, is less than one equity has more weight than debt when debt to equity ratio is greater than one uh, debt has more weight than equity so when debt to equity ratio
ratio is equal to 1, debt is equal to equity, and then rising debt ratio means the company results toward debt and more interest expense. So, kapag yung debt ratio natin tumataas, mas gumagamit na tayo ng debt financing. At di-expect mo, mo na rin dahil umuutang ka, pati yung interest rate mo ay tumataas. But when there is falling ratio, uh, falling debt ratio, like for example, um, yung ating example here that um, in 2019 is 1.86, so but in 2020, 1.16. So it went down, so nagkaroon po ng shifting going to equity financing. So next, the time interest earned ratio. It answers the question, how many times can an entity pay for their interest expenses with their operating income? So, uh, so ang tinitingnan natin is operating income ng company. So, paproceed tayo ngayon for sa income statement. Further analysis. Can it cover interest expenses? So, how many times we earned that income in order for us to use it to pay our interest? So, we will use this formula. Time interest earned ratio is equal to earnings before interest and taxes over interest expense. So, let's go to our calculation in time interest earned ratio. So, first, is how you are going to get the earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, so, punta tayo ngayon sa ating income statement. So, here, um, we can see here the net income before tax. Net income. So, dito tayo sa net income before tax. And then, we will add it to our interest expense with 12560 Itong net income before tax, we will uh, 1,875,824 add by our interest expense with 12,560 and it will come up with 1,888,384 and then divide by our interest expense with, with 12,560 and it will come up with 150.35 so the company's operating income can cover interest payment for 150 times okay so it shows that the company is able to meet the its interest obligation with the income that it earns pero hindi literally na 150 times tayo magbabayad ng interest the company um, so talaga the company is able to cover their interest expenses with the operating income that it has. So, so remember that um, the higher the time ratios, the better. Okay, so let's move on to our next um, efficiency ratio. So measures how well does an entity utilizes their assets and resources to generate income. So this all the formula. Asset turnover ratio is equal to net sales over average total assets. And next, inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold over the average inventory. And then account receivable turnover ratio is equal to net credit sales over the average accounts receivable. So, um, isa isahin natin sila. So first, the asset turnover ratio here. Asset turnover ratio is answer the question, how many times can an entity generate sales with their total asset resources? So, ang perspective po natin dito is yung mga resources natin. So, sana naka-generate ng sales. Ang tanong, how many times can an entity generate sales sa paggamit natin ng mga resources? So, with this formula, asset turnover ratio, the net sales over average total asset. So, our net sales is um, 4 million. So, here, our net sales in our income statement is 4 million. And then, to get the average total assets, so, by the way, how are we going to get the average total assets? So, get the total assets of 2020 and then add it to 
to the total assets of 2019 and then divide it by 2. So, average total asset. So, 12,356,216 add by 12,571,442 for this 2020 and 2019. So, you will divide it by 2 and it will come up with 12,463,829. So in this um, calculation, the 4 million divided by 12,463,829, it will come up with 0 0.32. Okay, so the company's asset can only generate sales with 0.32 times. So remember that um, the higher the asset's turnover ratio, the better. So it shows how the company is able to generate sales from the resources. So sadly, um, we can only generate sales with 0.32 times. So hindi pa tayo umabot ng 1. Exactly. So our asset turnover ratio is quiet and favorable. Okay, so it gives um, so it gives the company goal signal to maximize their efforts um, in terms of selling. replenish ng stock natin sa storage. So, um, the formula that we are using is inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold over the average inventory. So, our cost of goods sold here in um, our income statement, cost of goods sold is equal to 1,630,880 and then we will divide it to our average inventory so our average inventory is um, in 2020 677,520 and then you'll add it to our 2019 inventory with 756,442 and then divide it by 2 so the answer will come up with 2.27 so the company's inventory <coughs> turnover is low. Um, so imagine for the whole um, accounting period, two times lang na cover replenish yung inventory. So parang ang bagal natin makabenta. So we always remember that a low turnover might mean weak sales and excess inventory. So katula ng ating ratio is 2.27. So weak talaga yung sales natin. So, but a higher um, turnover might mean strong sales and insufficient inventory. So, um, so, in any case, if that an entity has a higher turnover, it's an indication that the company is really, really doing good. So, in terms of um, sales, pero watch out sila kasi yung inventory baka insufficient sa sobrang bilis. So, alam naman natin kapag mabilis maubos yung inventory natin, so lost customer yun. Why? Because sometimes may bibili sa'yo and then you don't have, you don't have, um, you don't have any products or any um, outlets that you will give it to your customer. So, meaning, lost customer yun. So, that part, inventory turnover ratios may help the company understand the flow of inventory in terms of sale and in terms of kung exist ba yung inventory natin or kulang na. So next is accounts receivable turnover ratio. It answers the question, how many times can an entity turn the receivables to cash for a certain period? So um, this is what we want that our, that our receivables will turn into cash. But the question is, how many times um, during the accounting period that it will become into cash. 
So we will use this formula account receivable turnover ratio is equal to um, net credit sales over the average account receivable. So net sales, net credit sales nothing is you'll see here that our income statement that our net sales is four million. And then our average it will divide to our average uh, account receivable which is 653,974 and then add in 2019 885,697 and then you will divide it by 2 so it will come up with 769,835.5 so 4 million divide 769,835.5 so it will come up with 5.20 so in a period the company uh, turns receivable into cash five times over the whole period. So five times kalang makaka paningin. So remember that um, a low turnover signal weak collection efforts, but a higher turnover signal strong collection efforts. So next, uh, we will find out that um, how many days that our receivables turn into cash. So this. This receivable, how many days does an entity want for receivables to become cash? As what I've said earlier, that um, ilang days kaya matorn into cash ang ating account receivable. So, uh, 365 days over the account receivable turnover ratio, which is our five, which is our account receivable turnover ratio is 5.3. So, um, 365 days. Divide by 5.20 is equal to 70.19. So 70.19, when it will, uh, if you will convert it into month, so two months lang, two months ka kakapaling lang. But in a day, 70 days. So next is profitability ratios. So profitability ratios, it measures how well does an entity generate income that relates to the revenue, operating cost, assets, and capital. So we will um, follow this formula. Gross profit ratio is equal to gross profit over net sales. In return of assets, net income over the total assets, and in return of equity, net income over shareholders equity so first the gross profit ratio it answers the question how much gross profit does the company makes after considering cost of good that were sold so uh, meaning ilang percent ang tubo natin sa pagbibenta okay so by this formula gross profit ratio so is equal to our our gross profit is um, gross profit is two million three hundred sixty nine thousand one hundred twenty, and then our net sales is four million. So you will we will divide it and it will come up with fifty nine point twenty three percent. Okay, so um, fifty nine point twenty three percent sales in the entities gross profit so money shy um gross profit na to. so always remember that gross profit ratio represents the amount of gross profit for every one peso sales so um, it talks about one peso sale so um for example for every one peso net sales how many centavos are gross profit so to compute it for example our gross profit is 59.23 to, com to compute it you will just multiply the 59.23 percent into one and then it is and it so the answer is equal to 0.59 centavos so so one peso sa company binenta sa company na one peso so my profit sila in one peso they have 59 centavos
percent returns in the usage um, of its assets to gather the profit okay so remember that if um, the higher the returns the better so if must high money must better so next let's move on to the next um, is return on equity it answers the question how much income was returned in the usage of equity to generate profit. So, um, the, well, this formula return in equity is equal to our net income over the shareholders' equity. So, our net income is 1,313,077 over our shareholders' equity. Our shareholders' equity here is. Five billion seven hundred nine thousand five hundred twenty-two. It will come up with twenty-three percent. So the entity enjoyed twenty-three percent returns to the shareholders' investment or saati equity. Remember, so to be saying that the higher the returns, the better. So that's all, and thank you.